painless but very deadly. My mother was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, but um, we didn't see it early. When we saw it, it was too late, and unfortunately, she died. The cause still unknown. We know it comes about as a result of an abnormal growth of cells in the breast. And as to what causes that, we are not 100% sure. Doctors are not sure when the solution will ever be found. First and foremost, I must say for the record, that breast cancer will rise. No matter what you do, it's going to rise. It's a disease often associated with myths and misconceptions. Oh, misconceptions include things like if you have breast cancer, your breast will be removed. And as I already said, it doesn't have to be removed. Two, if your breast is removed, you will die. Three, chemotherapy is what kills patients. But it's not always a death warrant. They think it's an incurable disease. Breast cancer is one of the highly treatable diseases. It's a survivable disease. It's a curable disease. My name is Seth Kwame Boatin, and in this documentary, I talk science, exploring the painful reality of how abnormal blood cells invade the milk-producing glands of women, causing breast cancers. It's a disease snuffing out the lives of both men and women. We will tell you why you must care. These sounds are coming from one of the theaters here at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital's surgical block. A major surgery is about to start. Peeping through the window glass from the corridor here, I see a group of surgeons and nurses sorting out their surgical tools needed for the operation. The anesthetists are cautiously regulating the anesthetic machine to ensure the right concentrations of medicine are used. Inside the theater, the left breast of a middle-aged woman is being operated on. It's cancerous and the surgeons say the breast must be removed to save the life of the 54-year-old. That is what they are doing now with the help of a surgical laser as they use it to cut and destroy the abnormal breast tissues, detaching it from the body without harming the healthy ones. The breast has turned dark and there is a white gauze covering a big sore that has been left on it. Dr. Josephine in Southfold, the lead surgeon and her team are carefully carrying out the procedure There are a team of plastic surgeons on the left side of the surgical table trying their best to get some flesh enough to cover the gap going to be left after the surgery. After about an hour, the procedure is almost complete and a nurse takes the severed breast in a silver bowl. At the Kolobu Teaching Hospital, surgeons say, on the average, about 250 breast cancer surgeries are conducted every year. Dr. Josephine Saffold, who led the surgery a while ago, says there are many reasons for embarking on some of these procedures. It's when it's late and it has spread and then all the problems come. Mm -hmm. So, apart from curing, Surgically speaking, it makes a difference. <clears throat> uh, 
a lot of times, not all the times, but a lot of times, if the patient has a small lump, mm -hmm. when I say small, I'm talking two, three centimeters, mm -hmm. if you're lucky, four centimeters. When it's a small lump, we can actually remove the cancerous lump and leave the whole breast behind. Uh -huh. But once the lump is more than five centimeters or so, we may have to remove the whole breast. Meet Dr. Florence Dede, also a general surgeon at the Kolebo Teaching Hospital. She has handled many cases of breast cancer in the hospital. She believes the breast of the patient whose story was just shared could have been saved. Dr. Dede is worried how women continue to be deceived that breast cancer should be painful for it to warrant medical attention. Hormonal signs are having a lump in the breast and this lump is usually painless. Unfortunately for us, a lot of our patients are waiting for pain, even when they've noticed the lump, to take them to hospital. So I've seen something, but it's not painful. Why should I go to hospital? And it grows because most people know cancer is painful, but cancer is usually painful in the late stages. Occasionally, some people will have pain early, but very often it's, late, it's, it's painful in the late stages. So if we are waiting for pain, then we are not going to go early. A known breast cancer advocate in Ghana who also heads Breast Care International, Dr. Beatrice Riafiade says the painless nature of the condition is the reason more and more women are falling victims. This, I saw it and it was not painful. It's actually doing us a lot of harm. And I always tell the patients, if I would have an encounter with God, I would ask him that you should let breast cancer pay. We should let it be painful so that our women will go to the hospital early. Without the pain, they think there's no danger. And by the time they come to the hospital, most often there's little you can do. In many developed healthcare systems, measures have been put in place to make sure the disease is detected early. That is according to the director of the National Center for Radiotherapy and Nuclear Medicine at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Joel Yani. Patients may not even know that they have cancer, but there's a system. There's a system for calling the patients for mammograph, and they are therefore able to pick very tiny sub-centimeter lesions and deal with it. That is one of the advantages that um, ability to locate people using the GPS and the national ID. Elsewhere that they have these systems, streets are named, right? Buildings have numbers, you are able to locate them. They have a registry which has the date of birth of every citizen. There's a systematic approach. They will even call you, write a letter to you that come, your time for mammography is due, right? And therefore, um, patients are diagnosed very early. I have come to the Ga West district of the Greater Accra region to meet 45 year old mother of four, Matilda Shandoff. Matilda recently had a mastectomy after being diagnosed with breast cancer. I have four children. The last one, they are twins, they are in SS1. So on Wednesday, when I came from hospital, I was changing and she came to the room and said, Mommy, so when will your breast happen? I said, oh, my dear doctor, it will take a long time. It will terminate small, 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 so you should get time for me to come. So the only thing you do, ah, Mommy, why? Mommy, men, are what? That is what she said, and she went to the city. Matilda had learned from the television how to do personal breast examination. During one of her routine examinations, she felt a lump. This was in 2009. Matilda, knowing the potential effect of this, quickly rushed to the Nsawam Government Hospital in the eastern region of Ghana, but was referred to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital for further checks. A pathology report later confirmed her worst fears. She has breast cancer. When I heard it, I felt sad. Because later on, he was counseling me about the breast cancer. He told me they removed my breast, either if I like it, 
If they remove my breast, I will stay for long. But if I didn't allow it, I would die within some few years. So there's a woman there coming to dress her breast. She didn't allow it. So the sword came out. So she told me that I should look at the woman. She had the same problem. She's going to die because she didn't allow her to remove the breast. So she's going to die. So I was crying. I said I should stop crying. Matilda was told she would die if her breast at a late stage of cancer was not severed. She opted to undergo surgery. It is a good decision Matilda took, and this is what doctors always encourage. A breast surgeon at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Professor Clark Lamte, says if Matilda had chosen to live with a cancerous breast, she would have really struggled before dying. If you don't remove the cancer, the cancer is going to spread in two ways. One, it will spread locally, that's in the breast itself. It will become sore, it will become painful now, it will start bleeding, it will start discharging very offensive smell, and the person cannot even stay in public and so on. So that cancer needs to be treated. But also, once it spreads, it's going to kill the person. So our treatment does two things. One, it prevents some from dying at all, and two, it prolongs the life of others who we cannot save because they've come a bit too late. Breast cancer is fast punishing the image of Ghana on the continent. That's according to Dr. Beatrice Riafiadei. Out of the 54 countries we have in Africa, Ghana is number 10 when it comes to breast cancer bed. So if we were doing an exam and we were 10, it means we've done well. But for breast cancer, it means it's bad. It means our incidence is high. And that's the more reason why we have to do more than what we are doing. According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, breast cancer is the second most common cancer in the world. In 2012, an estimated 1.67 million new cases were diagnosed around the world. Chemical pathologist at the University of Cape Coast School of Medical Sciences, Dr. Frangati, has researched into breast cancers over the past 20 years. He says the statistics on the disease in Ghana are staggering. If I can give a rough estimate, the prevalence rate, which means the number of cases you can find in a year, all of the countries around 60,000 women. 60,000 women? Yes. Who have breast cancer. We're talking about the both old and new cases together, right? If the prevalence is about 1% of the adult population, that is what it comes to. Hopefully, hopefully. His colleague researcher, Dr. Kwesi Ayamfo, fears the figure would rise in the coming years. I must say, for the record, that breast cancer will rise. No matter what you do, it's going to rise. There are a lot of reasons for that. If there is time, we're going to. But the fact that we're even getting more cases means that more people are now becoming aware and coming out as compared to when they wouldn't come out. So it's not that maybe it's increasing. I was quite an apparent increase. It was there, but more and more people are now coming out. So that's why you see the increase. But in nature, breast cancer would increase. There's nothing we can do about it. It's a worrying reality about a condition killing many. We can't pinpoint a cause. So for malaria, you know that if a mosquito bites you and the mosquito has para uh, parasites, you will get malaria. We can't pinpoint anything definite like that for breast cancer. We know it comes about as a result of an abnormal growth of cells in the breast. And as to what causes that, we are not 100% sure. In Ghana, about 55% of the women who have breast cancer patients are premenopausal. They are women who have ceased menstruation. And our average age for menopause is between 40 and 50. We have early, we have late, but if we take the between 40 and 50, and about 55% of our patients are less than 50 years old, then it's indeed a matter of public health concern. There are scores of breast cancer patients scattered around the country, but not all of them know their status. Some regard the lump in their breast as nothing because it doesn't pain. Oh, 
I am off to the capital of the Ashanti region, Kumasi, to meet some more breast cancer survivors who have undergone various surgeries. Here in Kumasi, I meet one of them at the Peace and Love Hospital. She is called Joyce Edu and she is 42 years old. Her journey to becoming a breast cancer patient who survived but with one breast cut started six years ago. This is a summary of Miss Edu's story. She failed to seek any treatment. My church elders suggested to take me to the hospital, but I refused because I was scared. I had been told that if I went to the hospital, they would cut my breast and in no time I would die. So I went for a herbal treatment. This is one of the many myths and misconceptions about breast cancer that's thwarted the efforts of doctors to save women with the disease. Somebody feels a lump and says it's a boil. Somebody feels a lump and says I'm breastfeeding and the baby has stepped onto the breast so it gives me a lump. Somebody feels pain and says somebody touched me when I went to the market and that is what has given me. So there's misinterpretation of the symptoms. And then of course there's the internet where you see things like if you alogotomo is a thousand times more potent than chemotherapy. Such information going around. And so people sometimes are confused. They don't know what to do. And depending on their belief system and what they've been brought up with, in times of stress, people fall on their basic health beliefs. And that's what they go with. And so, yes, the information keeps going out. Every year, there's all this thing of breast awareness, things and so on. In Ghana, yeah, people think that breast cancer is caused by witchcraft. Is it not? No. They have breast cancer in America. They have breast cancer in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, everywhere. So is that the power of the witchcraft? No. They think it's a spiritual disease, which is also no. They think it's an incurable disease. Breast cancer is one of the highly treatable diseases. We even have found that it can take some people even more than a year to come, by which time, um, it may have spread, depending on the kind of breast cancer you have. So these are some of the many reasons breast cancer patients report late at the hospitals. Joyce Edu did the same. She moved from one traditional healer to the other and saw no improvement after two years. She then switched to a prayer camp. <laughs> The pastor made me fetch 12 buckets of water every day. He had the cross there, and that was where we always placed the buckets. He would then open the Bible and refer to the howling man who had leprosy jumped into the water. He would then ask that I, I should pour the water on my affected breast and he will ring a bell at midnight for us to do this. This did not help my breast at all. Kept getting worse every day. He gave me a medicine to smear on it. It got worse and became very big that a cloth could not cover it. I had to use bed sheets each time I wanted to cover it. <laughs> this is the problem breast cancer campaigners have with pastors. We spiritualize a lot of things. So people, you see something, but you give a spiritual interpretation to it. So I dreamt, and in the dream, somebody had given me a disease. So because it is coming, it's a spiritual disease, I don't have to go to hospital first. I need to tackle it spiritually first. So they go to the prayer camps, they go to the herbal centers, all sorts of places. And then when it gets to a point where nothing can be done, then they come. Unfortunately, the pastors are also not helping us. There are some who will tell you, go to hospital, but I think they are in the minority. Most of them will say, if you go to hospital and they touch you with a knife, you are dead. That will be one of our biggest problems. They come, they diagnose, and then they go to church and hope that you to go. So that's why we are focusing more on church. We realize that women tend to believe what their pastors say. So if the pastor himself advises us to come and tell us breast cancer, and then in the process of talking, we tell you what to do if there is any indication of suspicion. And this comes 
from the pastor through us. Most women listen to us then. The fact that someone is going to lose their breast is a major problem. As for cultural, the cultural reasons why you lose their breast, I don't know. But some husbands leave their wives because they develop breast cancer. Some members of the family think that uh, the victims have committed a certain taboo or have committed a spiritual crime. So they are being punished for, for that. Uh, but all these things are superstition, right? And so we need to work hard to disabuse our minds of these things that illness, life and illness and disease, they are, they are interlinked. As you age, you, you, you can fall sick. Her breast looked like this by the time she agreed to go to the hospital. It tells it all that the condition had reached a very advanced stage. By this time, she said her husband had run away, leaving her and their son alone. Her mother had to sell all her clothes to take care of her. The beginning of breast cancer, I always say, is just like tsunami. It starts slowly, but by the time you are at the end of it, that's when you see the damage it has caused. Not only to the patient, to the husband if she's married, to the children especially, and to the family. So it doesn't affect that woman alone. It affects a lot of people. Dr. Florence Dede says more and more women are coming in at the last stage. Unfortunately for those we see, a lot of studies have shown that some studies will quote anything more than 50%, so definitely more than half of the women, some as much as like 75%, will come in in what we call stage three and stage four. So generally we stage breast cancer, from the stage zero is the ones that you probably cannot even feel. And then we have stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. Stage four is where it has spread. Unfortunately, a lot of our women are coming at stage three and stage four, which is very advanced. At this stage, it becomes very painful, and there are several reasons for that. As Professor Clek Lamte explains, it can be quite agonizing, um, like, but like all deaths, all deaths are not the same. Because the cancer spreads, and it is the spread which leads to death, it all depends on where the cancer spreads to. So, for example, cancer in the bones will give us severe uh, bone pain. For those who have cancer spread into their lungs, they may not have so much pain, but the difficulty there is breathing. They have difficulty breathing and they are breathless. Or they may be coughing all the time, which may again be very distressing. So it depends on where, where it goes to. Uh, for those whose cancer may spread to their spine, they may be paralyzed. And that may be their greatest um, source of um, discomfort. So it depends on where the cancer spreads to. But if it spreads to the bone, for example, that is quite painful. For fear of losing her life, Joyce Adu agreed for her right breast to be removed. Due to how agonizing the pain was, I willingly agreed when the doctor said she would cut it. My mother and co had to always support me to lie down anytime I needed to sleep. I was really in pain, so I did not resist. It's been seven years now since Joyce Adu lost her breast. She wears silicone breast to complement the natural left breast. So nothing shows she's undergone surgery. Her initial fears of dying early after the mastectomy have not been confirmed. She's alive and doing well. Many breast cancer patients like Joyce Adu are now surviving.